Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Wednesday night q and I'm Jess, and I'm here to answer all of your cord cutting questions and talk about some of the top cord cutting stories of the week. So let's jump right in. If you have a question, go ahead and ask in the chat. Um, and before we get started, as people are coming in, you guys know the drill. Let me know what the weather's like where you are. How are you doing? How's your week? How's work going? Tell me everything. And I will get myself set up over here. Howard is here. Hello, Brett is here. AJ is here. You guys, I was two minutes late tonight and I have to tell you, I was right on time and then sat down and realized that I forgot my mug and I wasn't going to do this without my water. I'm not a maniac, so sorry for being just a couple minutes late. All right, some more people coming in. Uh, Jeff is here, Chris is here. Hey guys. Um, no one's telling me about the weather where you are. This is our Wednesday night tradition. Somebody. There's Howard, 35 degrees and cold in Chicago. Yep, same here, out in Cleveland. It is getting ridiculous. I'm pretty annoyed about it. Bill is here. Hello. <laughs> G-Money says she's a maniac, maniac. That's for sure. NYC, 55 degrees. Okay, that's a little better. I think it's supposed to get a little bit nicer out here this weekend, so fingers crossed. We had a great weekend. The weather was perfect. I spent all day Saturday just hiking around. I went to the lake. It was wonderful. 35 cold and snowing in Buffalo. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know. You guys were concerned about my water, too. It's okay. You can admit you would be lost without the mug, too. <laughs> it's tradition. I'm not here to break tradition. 55 in Washington. That's not bad. 65 and sunny. 72 and sunny. That's like my ideal weather. Love that for you. 66 in Kentucky. Cloudy in Seattle. Sounds like you guys get a lot of that out there. Queens, New York. It felt chilly. Yep, here too. Gray and gloomy. Yep. All the time here. NYC, you were feeling sad earlier. Yeah, hopefully this can be a bit of a pickup for you. Um, Howard says, watching the Bulls last game of the year. <sighs> yeah, I gave up whenever the Cavs were out. <laughs> All right, so how's everyone doing? What should we talk about first? Oh, never mind. I already know what we need to talk about first. Oh, Sydney, you beat me to it. Yes, CNN Plus, you guys. What in the world? So, not that this is funny. I don't wish any of this on anyone that was working at CNN Plus. But last week we were talking about CNN Plus and kind of speculating about what we thought would happen with this new news streaming service. And we all kind of had the same feeling that it wasn't going to last very long. We were talking about whether it would shut down or wrap into a different streaming service. But... Here we are. Um, CNN Plus, yeah, is shutting down already. And one interesting thing about this is that we initially heard the announcement that was given to the staff saying that it was going to shut down at the end of the month on the 30th. And now we're hearing rumors that it could be even sooner, that people are now hearing it's going to be tomorrow. So yikes, a pretty short lifespan for CNN Plus. I see someone mentioning Quibi over there. Yeah, <laughs> I mentioned this on Twitter that Quibi lasted seven months longer than CNN Plus, which is whew, not great. Not great at all. Um, yeah, it just seems like it wasn't performing well. So as soon as that Warner Media Discovery merger happened, that was the first thing they did. They axed CNN Plus. So there we are. We were spot on. Um, Yes, Chris, Quibi did last longer. Quibi lasted eight months, actually, from start to finish, and CNN Plus got a month. So there we are. Um, Ron wants to know if IMDb TV will update to Freebie. Yes, so that app will, it should just automatically update and rebrand to become Freebie. And I think everything's pretty much staying the same from what I understand. It's just a name change, and I'm sure the logo and um, branding will change a bit. Oh, CJ, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Sorry, I missed that earlier. 
Um, does Quibi get CNN Plus content? Well, with Quibi, as we know, the Roku channel did pick up that Quibi content and turned it into Roku Originals. Maybe someone will want CNN Plus content. However, uh, it was only on for a month, so I don't know how much there is there. I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of iteration of CNN Plus show up on the Warner Discovery app whenever they eventually combine their services into one app. Would not be surprised at all to see a news hub, a CNN hub, the way that Disney Plus and HBO Max do their hubs with different brands. Would not be surprised at all to see some of that CNN Plus stuff end up there. But we will have to wait and see. As of now, it's just not great news for CNN Plus. <laughs> DMS says maybe Elon can buy CNN next. I just made a comment about that to someone yesterday. Someone DM'd me about, oh, you know what? It was a different streaming service, and they said that they don't think the service will survive. And that was my comment to maybe Elon is looking for another something to buy up. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings about that. We don't need to get into that here. <laughs> Annette, hello. Happy to see you. <laughs> Bill says T Vision lasted longer too. Yeah. Um, Philip and I were joking, we were talking on Slack last week and saying that we should start measuring everything in Quibis, so, uh, CNN Plus would have been one-seventh of a Quibi. <laughs> um, yeah, T-Vision 2 kind of had the same fate. How many weeks did it last? So, from the time it launched to the time they announced that it would be ending, it was about three weeks, so it'll be a month total that it was live. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Brett. Everybody's here. This is great. Hi, everybody. Um, I think someone mentioned to hit the like button if you want. If you enjoy these Q&As, we appreciate it. How many Quibbies did Lowcast last? Lowcast was around for a while. I don't know the exact launch date. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, January 2018, and then it ended in September of 2021. So like three Quibbies. A little more, maybe. I think it's hilarious to use that as a measurement. I don't know. That's been making me laugh for a couple weeks. All right. Um, G Money says, how in the world can they evaluate it so quickly? I don't know. We never saw official numbers or anything, so I'm not sure exactly how many people were using the app or how much time they were spending within the app. Um... Yeah, so I'm not really sure, but they must have seen that it was just not going to go anywhere and decided to exit immediately. It must have been performing pretty poorly for them to make a decision that quickly. But like I said, I don't have any of the inside info, so I'm not really sure how that all worked out. But yeah, we were talking about this last week, and I see some of you in the comments now saying it too, about wrapping it up into a bigger streaming service, making it sort of maybe an add-on, or like I said, just making it sort of a hub within that service. So we will wait and see, but I would not be surprised at all to see some kind of CNN Plus hub within that streaming service whenever they merge Discovery Plus and HBO Max. All right, just renewed my Netflix with a gift card. Did not think I would like it. I do, and now I have it until the end of October. Love that. Okay, so I'm surprised that you didn't have Netflix before. Oh, you just renewed it, so you must have had it before. But yeah, that's great. I think using gift cards, such a smart idea. I always recommend this around the holidays. If people need a last minute gift, you can do virtual gift cards for a bunch of streaming services. So Netflix has them, Hulu has them. Um, Vudu has them if you want someone to be able to digitally rent a movie, so that's really convenient. Uh, yeah, I just think it's a great little last minute gift idea, so I'm glad that you got one of those gift cards, and now you can use it through October. There's a ton of new content coming to Netflix. They announced all of this either early this year or even late last year. They announced a ton of these new titles that were coming, and they have so much lined up throughout the year. A lot of that stuff that got put off for the pandemic is finally now coming out. So you can look forward to lots of original content coming to Netflix. Um, DMS has saw that only a thousand people had signed up for CNN Plus. Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of different numbers from different places, and I'm not 100% sure what to believe or what is just speculation or different places kind of looking at different numbers. So 
I'm curious if they will ever give us any kind of official number or if we'll all just keep speculating, but yeah, it must have been awfully low. AJ says Discovery Management did not want to stand alone CNN, and that may have been it. I think my argument from the beginning was kind of that people are getting their news from all kinds of different sources already, and I don't think they need a standalone app, so apparently they agreed with me. Okay, let me see here. What did I miss? Uh, Jeff wants to know about the Bally app. I've got nothing for you, unfortunately. They... I don't know. They keep saying that they're going to release this app. At first it was spring and then it was before MLB season and then it was summer and I haven't heard anything lately. I don't know. And we've talked about this so much, you guys. I keep saying that if this app does not work the way that it wants, the way that Sinclair wants it to, I would not be surprised to see them just kind of call it a wash and go back to these streaming services to make some more deals. So again, I hate to say that I'm wishing ill will <laughs> on this app or anyone that works on it, but I kind of am because if it doesn't work out, I can see them coming back to streaming services, which would be kind of great for cord cutters. Um, you would be paying for a service instead of a standalone app, which may or may not be expensive. Again, we don't have definite answers here. So personally, I think that's what's going to happen and it's almost what I'm wishing does happen is that the app is just never really going to surface and we will maybe see these channels come back to streaming services. Who knows? Speculation. Again, that's just my personal opinion. Okay, G Money says that Michael saves a friend of Cord Cutters News. Hi, Michael, if you're here, sometimes you pop up in the chat. Michael Saves has an interesting video about Netflix and speculation on what they might do. I'll have to check that out. I missed that one. I do really enjoy Michael's videos, so I'll definitely check that out later. But yeah, I think there's an awful lot of speculation about what's going to happen. So in case you missed it, Netflix has finally admitted that yes, they are probably, not even probably, they are going to do an ad-supported tier and it will be less expensive, but you'll have to sit through ads, just like all the other streaming services are doing. Netflix has always been very anti-ad, but now here we are. I think that they, well, so they lost subscribers for the first time in a long time during this past quarter. So I think that they're seeing that there isn't a lot of room for growth unless they change things up a little bit. So that is what is happening there. But yeah, I would love to know um, Michael's opinion on that. So I will definitely check out that video. Uh, JJ says, good evening, Jess. Hello, JJ, how are you? Do you know when HBO Max and Discovery is going to be one? We do not yet. We do not have a definite date as far as I know. They did say, though, that they're going to take some time where they keep those two services separate, probably just to kind of keep an eye on performance, see what's going on with both of them, take a look at the infrastructure of those apps and see which one, what's working with them, what's not working with them. To be honest, there have been some big issues with both apps, so I'm sure they're just sort of like weighing their options here to see if they want to put both services onto an existing app or create an all new one. So we will have to wait a while for those to become one, but they are supposed to be doing a bundle deal for us. So we should be getting that sometime soon. We will keep an eye on it. <laughs> you guys are always telling me there are ghosts behind me. I've had enough. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see here. Oh, Michael is here. Somebody said that he popped up in the chat. I didn't see him. Oh, there you are. CNN Plus is just the beginning of the cuts that David Zasloff will be making. Just hope that the quality of scripted content on HBO doesn't go down. Yeah, completely agree. They have such a gold mine in this HBO content. And some of these HBO Max originals have been so good. Have you guys watched The Flight Attendant? I love it. One of my favorite shows from the past couple years. The new season just came out and I was concerned about how they were going to keep the story going, but oh, I love it. So I'm with you, Michael, and others who are agreeing over here in the comments. I hope so too. I hope that they keep that quality really high. Um, I think they were very smart about how they described what they're going to do just because, or described the assets that they have now, 
because they were saying, you know, HBO does have all this very high quality content. People know and trust that HBO name. And then they have Discovery, which is unscripted, just absolutely bonkers <laughs> reality shows like 90 Day Fiance. So two completely different things. And I hope that they keep both of them the way that they are and only make improvements and don't sacrifice any of this quality. I'm right there with you. Okay, I know I'm missing some. If I don't answer your question, please ask again. There were a bunch of questions that came in all at the same time. Uh, Chris says, Comcast and Charter are rivals, but they are teaming up to create a new streaming platform. Absolutely true. And let me see if I can grab this link for you since it was a fresh one today. I'll stick that in the comments. So yeah, Comcast and Charter just emailed this morning to share this announcement with us. They are teaming up on a joint venture to develop a new streaming platform that they say will provide customers with a world-class user experience and navigation with all of the top apps and more choice in the streaming marketplace. So basically, they just want to get in on this streaming industry a little bit more than either of them have already. So they'll be using the Comcast Flex app. They've got the device already. They're getting more into smart TVs. They're teaming up to combine like Zumo and Peacock is going to be featured on this new platform. So not a ton of details just yet about what this is going to look like, but of course we'll keep an eye on it. Curious what you guys think though. Would you be interested in a streaming platform developed by two big cable companies? Obviously we know they already own like Zumo and Peacock and some other stuff. And that's all fine and good, but curious about this new one where it's two cable companies teaming up to get into streaming. Let me know what you think. All right, let's see here. Uh, Chris is here. Hey, um, Belty Cat said something and I miss it. Would you subscribe to Netflix if, if I did jokes instead of commercials? Yes. 110%. If there was a streaming service that took joke breaks by Belty Cat instead of commercial breaks, sign me up all day. Absolutely. I think you should go to some marketing firms and sell that idea. Yeah, no, I will not give any spoilers for The Flight Attendant, but I will tell you that if you watched the last season, saw how it wrapped up, and you were concerned about what they were going to do to keep that story going... Don't be worried, it's a new story, but it is just as good and just as crazy. So, highly recommend. Okay, um, Jose says, HBO Legacy series that air on the actual network are the best quality. Max Originals are a little fluffier, but still good. Honestly, I'm into fluffy. So things like The Flight Attendant that are still very, very well done, but just like kind of... I don't want to say silly because I don't think it's a silly show, but um, just a little more fun, maybe a little less heavy and a little more fun is how I would explain them. And I really like them a lot. HBO Max has made some of my favorite original content. So really enjoying it. Okay. Will DirecTV stream add NFL Network soon? That is a great question. I do not have an answer for you. I did ask them just recently. And it was whenever they were adding some of these new sports features, like the auto extend on your sports recordings. Whenever they sent me that info, I wrote back and said, hey, any chance of adding NFL Network? And they did not have an answer for me right now. They said it was not in the immediate plans, but that could mean we're doing it before this season, or it could mean maybe years from now. So no, I do not have an exact answer for you yet, but it's something that they are definitely thinking about. So. We'll see. We'll see when it happens. All right. Frank says, I think it would be, I think I'd be interested what two big companies are teaming up. That is Comcast and Charter. So that link that I posted just a minute ago has some more info for you. Oh, Brett is watching Julia on HBO Max. I watched the first episode and I did like it. I just haven't had time to go back to it yet. Uh, Frank says, cable companies have got to get into the streaming business to be very competitive in the near future. You know what's funny? I saw that some of you also saw this post on Twitter yesterday where Rich Greenfield, who is 
super smart, knows this industry inside and out, was posting about streaming fizzling out sooner than expected. And I had to comment and say, streaming is not fizzling out. People are just tired of paying cable prices for streaming. So we're seeing price hikes left and right. We're seeing all these new services popping up that are just additional monthly costs. And I think people are just tired of paying the high price. I know from surveying all of our readers every year that price is the number one factor when people cut the cord, which obviously makes sense. And it's what Core Critters News has been built around, helping people save money. So... Uh, my thought is really that it's not that people don't want streaming, it's just that they want to save money. So a lot of people, myself included, are going to ad supported tiers of services. They are choosing free streaming services, my favorite thing, <laughs> like Pluto TV and the Roku channel. They are just finding smarter, better ways to get their content without paying a crazy high monthly fee. Yeah, NYC, I saw that too, that you agreed with what I said to Rich, that streaming is not fizzling out. Um, we prefer not having contracts. We don't want to be stuck with this high monthly bill. We want to have live TV when we want it, but we want the option of canceling that and going to a different service. It's just about having lots of options. We want options and we want to save money. So that is my hot take on whether or not streaming is fizzling out. Okay, let's see here. Um, a couple of you were asking about Charter and Comcast and whether they would be pulling it into their cable services. They were very clear in this press release that they were not, that this has nothing to do with their cable business or their, I think they said broadband either. The joint venture does not include Charter or Comcast broadband or cable video businesses. So they were very clear about that and it should be completely separate. Albert says there's so much free content that it's enough to cut the cord. Completely agree. And this is something that we talked about last week and we can talk about again now is that if you don't want to pay for content, you don't have to. There really is so much good free content. So you have like a free tier of Peacock, you have Plex, you have Pluto TV, the Roku channel, Crackle, so many. You can find everything from sports to news to music channels to all of your favorite tv shows you don't have to pay if you don't want to and you can still do it all legally which is important for us <laughs> and antennas obviously are another huge part of that if you want to watch primetime tv if you want to watch news sports weather you can get a lot of that with your antenna so yeah that was my argument too just that people don't want to be paying a ton of money for all of these different services uh, G Money says the fact that free services are thriving is interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lots of ad money to be made, it seems, good for them and the consumer. Yeah, and I'm wondering if that was a big part of the reason that Netflix took so long to get into the idea of having ads, but then was also fully on board with it um, just last week whenever they did their talk. Uh, yeah, I think that everyone's finally seeing that, yes advertisers are willing to throw some money into streaming because they understand how big it is. They understand that it's not going anywhere. There is money to be made all around. So there we are. Yeah, Friendly TV, only $8. That's another thing. So many affordable services. Philo is another good one if you can use an antenna for your local channels. Sling is still pretty affordable. Friendly TV, 8 bucks a month. A basic Hulu subscription if you just want to watch your on-demand content and Hulu originals. So loads of options. All right. Frank says, yes, it's too expensive and people want more features and streaming services included in their bundled packages with cable companies. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing about streaming, too, is that, yes, it's still very competitive. There are a ton of options and all of that. But there are so many interesting deals and things and things that you just won't get with cable. So, for example, if you have Verizon Wireless like I do, you can get Discovery Plus for free. I was getting Disney Plus for free for a while. I think I was getting Apple TV Plus for free for a while. 
So you won't find those things with cable. You might have a wireless plan where you get a discount on cable from the same company, but then you're tied into this however long contract, one year or two years. So another really good thing about streaming, there are just so many different ways to find deals, to find freebies, all of this stuff. And I think that that's what people are looking for. And they're just not going to get it with cable. Um, let's see. Yes, yeah, some of you are talking about some other free services. Someone mentioned Story Channel. I'm not sure. Oh, is that the one that's on Friendly TV? Uh, Chris says more competitive pricing and more value for what streaming programs are available will keep customers happy. Yeah, competitive pricing for sure. I think it's tricky with live TV streaming services because they're paying so much to carry certain channels. And then whenever one raises its price, pretty soon all of them raise their price. So the prices of those are getting a little out of control. And of course, we understand why it happens. Like the price of cable is also going up very, very quickly. And these channels are just charging more to be carried by these streaming services. So of course, the prices have to go up. But we love having the option to have a service for a month and then put it on hold for a while. You can't do that with cable. Uh, not local sports in NYC. Are you saying you can't get them with streaming? Um, it is tough to watch sports. I completely agree. I was just going through some of our how to watch MLB team pages and giving them a little update for the season. And it's just crazy to me how many regional sports networks are not available anywhere except DirecTV Stream. And I have to tell you guys, DirecTV Stream kind of killing it right now. So the reason that we were hesitant to suggest it to a lot of people for a long time is that the price was so crazy high. But now that all of the prices are kind of on the same level, DirecTV Stream is a great option. They have these regional sports networks, which to be fair, you have to upgrade to a higher priced plan to get those. But they have a ton of sports channels. They have all of your normal channels. They have a good DVR. They have this new auto extend and other features for sports fans. So I don't know, direct TV stream getting pretty attractive. Um, Aaron says, my argument is that if Comcast has its own version of streaming live TV with DVR, the pluses to that is that people could get the advantages of cable at a lower cost, plus more channel options. Yeah, so like I said, this is completely separate from its cable package. It should, I don't know, I'm really curious about what this is going to look like. Um, I like that it's going to have Zumo wrapped in so you get those free channels. And then it seems like it's just going to be a platform kind of like Roku or Amazon where you would just get the apps like you normally would. I don't think you're really going to get any discounts or anything. So I think they're just trying to get into the streaming game and have a platform available. I don't know. We'll see what it all looks like when it's ready to go. Yes, IMDb TV, Amazon's free streaming service, is rebranding to Freebie, which the name just cracks me up. We talked about this last week. It just sounds like a piracy service to me, but it's not. So if you have IMDb TV downloaded and you see something called Freebie pop up, it's not spam. It's not piracy. <laughs> it's just the rebrand of that app. Yeah, I know a lot of you are really hoping that Fubo TV brings back the Turner channels. Agreed. For a sports service, it's crazy that they don't have TNT. I'm with you. All right, let's see. <laughs> Jose says, I've been with DirecTV Stream since their disastrous launch day, but they've kept improving in their, their service and their platform. Completely agree. I One of my good friends has DirecTV Stream and I go over to their house pretty often to watch sports. And I've noticed too, just within the past year or so, that it's just getting better and better. So I am a fan. And who knew, after all the complaining that Luke and I used to do about AT&T services, I am a fan of DirecTV Stream. Why do I feel like my camera's up awfully high today? Okay, there we go. All right, let's see what else we should talk about. Uh, Rockland says that $70 a month DirecTV stream is high, but I got a letter yesterday 
got a letter yesterday, you get next to nothing. I would disagree with that. It is about the same price as most of the other live TV streaming services. You get all the same channels. You get some that aren't available on other services. You get a good DVR, like I said, some pretty cool features. It works really well from what I've seen. So I would disagree that you get next to nothing. I don't think that's true. <laughs> so if you're saying stay away from AT&T, completely understand. Once you have a bad experience with a brand, I completely get it. Daniel said I heard Comcast and Charter are making streaming TVs. That is sort of true. Let me put this link in the comments if you missed it, if you came in a little late. Um, they are teaming up for a new streaming platform. All of the info is in that link from the press release that came out today about this. They are using, whoops, what am I doing here? Ooh, I'm closing things. Um, Comcast is going to use Flex. They're going to use Zumo. They're going to highlight Peacock. Uh, Charter is throwing a ton of money into it. So that is what's going on with that partnership. All right. Chris says, did you hear that Amazon OS is bringing back the My Stuff icon? Oh, I did not. Interesting. They are always playing around with different features and layouts and things. Interesting. All right. Belty Cat has a joke for us. Belty Cat, I can't read all of them out loud, but I'll give you one. Um, I tried to buy an air freshener out of a vending machine. The sign says it was out of odor. <laughs> oh, Belty Cat. Every time. Okay. Um, let's see. Norm says, my Roku is still showing the IMDb TV icon, but today's the day that they're supposed to rename. I would imagine that the rebranding is going to have a slow rollout, just like everything else. Uh, it might take a manual update. I have no idea. Honestly, I have not checked at all today. I haven't even turned on my TV, so I will check later, though. Chris says, a question since I likely missed this, for streaming without Roku channel needed, can we say Google TV is top tier? I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you saying you just want to know if Google TV is good? Are you talking about Chromecast with Google TV? I know we have some fans here if that's what you're asking about. <laughs> Howard says, DirecTV stream changes their name almost as many times as John Mellencamp. They are well known for changing their name frequently. I don't know if you guys remember back when Luke and I were making videos, there were times when he would make me be the one to talk about AT&T because I swear he could not keep the name straight. So I would always have to say AT&T TV and AT&T TV now. And then, of course, it changed pretty soon after that. Will Optimum TV ever do something like that? To be honest, I have been saying for a long time that I think a lot of cable companies will kind of make the move into streaming. We are seeing cable subscriber numbers go down every quarter. We're seeing streaming customers rise every quarter. So I think that cable companies are smart to get into streaming one way or another. I think that it's very interesting, this Comcast and Charter partnership. I think that some of the smaller companies might want to just partner up with an existing service, but who knows? I think a lot of things a lot of things will change in the next like five years or so. And we'll just have to sit back and watch. Uh, James says, Do you ever do you think you might ever try? Do I think that YouTube premium wait? <laughs> How many times will I read this before I understand the question? Do you think might ever try tying in YouTube Premium to YouTube TV subscriptions? Oh, okay. So YouTube TV does have like a YouTube channel. Is it YouTube Red maybe? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't see why they wouldn't. I know that those are two separate things and people want them for separate reasons. But yeah, I mean, never say never. Obviously, they own both. It would make sense too. Put them all together. Uh, I do. I have a lot of feelings about the Yankees and Guardians baseball game with the people yelling at the Guardians and throwing trash at them. Mm -mm. Was not a fan of that at all. 
those are my thoughts. We'll just leave it there. All right. Yeah, live TV does buffer more often. I would say check your internet connection. Make sure that you are close enough to a router. Um, if you have a streaming device that you can connect directly to your internet, great. Highly recommend. I have much fewer problems whenever I do that. So just a couple of suggestions. Um... Sir Rome says, my option on Netflix has lost a lot of subscribers. Oh, your opinion on Netflix. It lost a lot of subscribers because of its study on sharing accounts. Therefore, a lot of them dropped Netflix. This is all very interesting. And Netflix did list password sharing as one of the reasons that they think their subscriber numbers dropped. They are saying that just a ton of people. Let me see if I can find this post. I know we hate it when I do this because I can't talk and search at the same time, but I would love to find the number that Netflix listed in their earnings report whenever they were talking about um, how many subscribers they lost and what the causes were. Of course, one of the reasons they gave was more competition, that there are just so many more services now that they have to compete with, but they also did list password sharing. Here's the post. Let me see here. Um, where is it? Okay, here we go. Netflix estimates that the service is being shared with over 100 million households in addition to the 222 million paying households. So they're saying that 100 million households are using Netflix for free. So that's a huge number, of course. I'm not sure how they're getting that number, what their research looks like. But they are saying that, yeah, that's affecting their revenue. It's affecting their subscriber numbers. So I've been hearing a lot of rumors that Netflix is gearing up to do some cracking down on password sharing. We'll see what it looks like. We know that they were doing all of that testing in some other countries to see if people would be willing to pay to have extra people on their account. So I'm assuming that that's what they will try to do here as well. But we will see. G Money says that one idea Michael Saves mentioned for Netflix is to post one episode a week instead of all at once. Yeah, and we've seen different services try different strategies with this. So some of them are doing one episode a week. Some of them are putting them all out at once to do binge watching, which Netflix is known for. And I'm not sure. I haven't really heard a whole lot about which strategy works best. The new thing that I'm seeing is that a lot of services, and this happened with the flight attendant, they will release the first few episodes all at once to get people really interested and caught up in the story, and then they'll go into a weekly. So they do that with some of them. Was it The Circle, maybe, the reality show where they were doing weekly episodes? So they do sometimes do that, and I'm curious if they're kind of testing that out to see what the interest is. Uh, DMS says, I know since I canceled Netflix a few weeks ago, I'm getting nonstop emails to get me back. Yeah, I've seen that with a lot of services. Sling TV does that a lot. Um, I'm signed up with, I think, a work email, and I still get um, emails to my personal email address all the time just saying, hey, come back. We have this other deal for you. So it definitely happens with all the services. That's not just Netflix, but yeah, they do definitely want to get those numbers back up. Uh, Farmer says Netflix is in big trouble. None of the media companies want to license their content. Yeah, that's definitely part of it, too, is that there are so many different services now that every company is keeping its own content on its own service. So that's obviously causing some problems with services like Netflix and Hulu, especially where they aren't um, getting the same amount of content that they were before. We're seeing this with Hulu more than anyone. Tamara was writing a bunch of stories for a while where Hulu was losing deals with a bunch of different companies, losing a bunch of content licensing, and so that they can't do like next day streaming of TV shows. So it's definitely affecting a bunch of services. NYC, yeah, good point. Another thing that's noteworthy is Dancing with the Stars, the first live weekly show on Disney+. Plus. So things are about to shake up. And I'm wondering if, again, that licensing thing might have something to do with that. So 
Hulu is losing a bunch of these shows because these companies want to keep their content on their own services, so they're not licensing it out to Hulu. And now we're seeing that Disney Plus is kind of testing the waters with what live content looks like over there. So could be interesting. <laughs> we will have to wait and see. We've been talking about this for a while, though, the possibility that Disney might start doing a lot of stuff over on Disney Plus and then keeping Hulu as just a live TV streaming service instead of doing any demand content over there. I'm not sure how that ties in with the Dancing with the Stars thing, but it seems like they're just doing a lot of testing right now to see what's going to work. Uh, Voodoo has a new interface. Interesting, Richard. I did not notice that today. I'll have to check that out. I really like Voodoo a lot. I think it's been... It's just been like a really good service for me. I've bought some movies there and then they go into my Movies Anywhere library. Just love how easy that whole setup is. So I am a fan of Voodoo and they have gift cards, which I mentioned before, but man, such a good idea for a gift. If you are looking for something for your mom for Mother's Day, there's an idea for you. Uh, you can do a gift card and she can choose the movie that she wants to see. All right. Big Al, you think that Netflix could lose millions of subscribers? I don't know if I see them losing millions, but I will say this loss was kind of a surprise, and I'm curious to see what happens next quarter. They are maintaining that they are going to get more subscribers next quarter, so we will see. G Money says the volume of free stuff on Vudu is insane. Yeah, if you don't mind ads in your movies, definitely check out Vudu. They always have such good deals too. If you go into their deals section or their sales section, whatever it is, they always have a ton of stuff on sale. So if you're interested in building up your digital library, definitely check them out. Check for an update first on the app. Will do. Thank you for the tip. Uh, Mike says there was an article a lot of a lot of cities and towns want streaming services to pay franchise fees Did you send me that either on Twitter or in my email? I saw that but I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but thank you um, Fandango emailed you today. Yeah, I get emails from them too if you're interested in going to the theater I really like that app too uh, Joel says, I got Sling two months for $10, signed up in December. Yeah, Sling has some good deals. They have another one right now. I think your first month is 50% off, maybe. So many good deals. And <laughs> this is another thing. I know that we've already gone through the cable thing, but I can't get over it. So there are always such good deals. So if you try out a service for a while, you cancel for a while, you want to come back, you can always find a good deal. Like Paramount Plus, my gosh, they're constantly offering a month free, a year free. It's insane. Same thing with Sling. They always have an offer for new subscribers. You can just save money left and right. Love it. Love saving money. Um, uh, Elon did buy Twitter. I'll keep my opinions to myself on that one. <laughs> Yeah, Hulu did lose some programming for sure. It seemed like every day for a while, Tamara was finding stories about Hulu losing more content. It was crazy. I really like Hulu. I hope it survives. I hope it's doing well. I am a fan of Hulu, but I mean, if it all moves over to Disney Plus at some point, fine. I have Disney Plus too. I'll keep watching there, but I do really like Hulu. Uh, TG says, got six months free of Apple TV Plus for my PlayStation. Again, that is the kind of deal that you're just not going to find with cable. I got free Apple TV whenever I bought, what did I buy? Oh, I bought my mom an iPad for Christmas and it came with free Apple TV Plus. And then whenever I got my new iPhone, it came with more Apple TV Plus. So you're just not going to find those deals. I'm never going to open up a product I buy and have a little card that says, here's a month free of your Comcast cable. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, Mike says, put your Twitter email address in the queue so I can get it. Oh, you want it in the chat? I'm at Just Types. It's pretty simple. Um, 
Yeah, and you can find me over there. You can DM me anytime. I will say, a couple of people have been sending really rude comments to both me and Philip, and I'm not going to respond if you say something mean to me. So I'm going to mute you, probably. But, I mean, if you're nice and you're asking me questions, I'm happy to talk to you all on Twitter. All right, NYC says Hulu is going to be a YouTube TV competitor, while Disney Plus is going to be similar to Peacock and Paramount Plus, a mix of live events and demand library. Yes, love that. And I feel like that is a very fair comparison. Um, yeah, I think that completely makes sense. I think that Paramount Plus and Peacock were very smart to get into sports. We've been talking about this forever, too. I kept saying I wanted Peacock to do more live sports because that's how it would stay competitive. And that's exactly what they're doing. Love to see it. And I think that Disney knows it's going to have to get more into sports to make that happen. They do own ESPN Plus, of course. But I think that on top of that, people are just looking for more. So, yeah, I'm with you, NYC. I like where your head's at. All right. Aaron says, Netflix being in trouble with the password sharing stuff is a red flag against them. Other streaming services have a healthier reputation with customers. I think the thing with Netflix is, this is something else that we talked about last week, a lot of us see Netflix as just being a normal monthly bill, like another utility for us. And so people have just kept it forever. They sort of, in my opinion, maxed out their subscribers at this point. So you either have Netflix or you're not going to have Netflix. And I think that now they're kind of feeling the strain of all these new services coming out, people just wanting to try different things. And then people realizing like, oh, I don't need to keep this monthly bill for a service that I'm not using. So I think that's where we're at right now. And it does seem like, I don't want to say they're struggling. They have 200 million or whatever the number is, subscribers, like they're fine. But I do think that that's why we're seeing those numbers drop just a bit. And I'm curious about what they're going to do to try and fix that. NFL Sunday ticket would be huge for Apple if they can win the battle. Yeah, I mean, huge for whoever gets it. I feel like we're between Apple and Amazon now. I know that we just saw the news. Let me see if this is easily accessible for me. I don't remember when we posted this, but Raymond just did a post recently on these Sunday ticket rumors. I'm not going to be able to find it, so I'm just going to skip it. Um, Raymond did a post though about how this deal between Sunday Ticket and Apple was a done deal. And the thing is that came from one source. So it has not been, um, hasn't been confirmed by anybody. And I mentioned this either last week or a couple weeks ago, but I will not believe anything until it is in writing in a press release from the NFL in my hands, <laughs> then I will believe that a deal is done. But we're hearing kind of the same rumors coming from both Apple and Amazon that it's a done deal, that they're in the lead, they're the one getting the rights, and we just don't know for sure. So we shall see. Yeah, Amazon has definitely been my thought the entire time. I've been saying this forever, and now I'm just stubborn and want to be right, so I want it to be Amazon. But it looks like it's probably going to be between those two. Could be interesting if a... Dark Horse comes in and scoops up these rights at the last minute, but hopefully we'll find out soon. If Apple gets NFL Sunday ticket, does that mean Amazon will lose Thursday night games? No, it does not. So the NFL was clear whenever they first sent out a press release about which services were getting access or getting rights to which games. That was all completely separate from Sunday ticket. Sunday ticket is its own thing. So I think that everything else will stay the same. So those Thursday night games, Monday night football, all of that should stay the same. All right, CJ says, Netflix is learning that just because they're the OG streaming service doesn't mean that they can't lose subscribers. Absolutely agreed. I think that they got very comfortable just being at the top and having competition, but not really feeling that competition. And now we are starting to see what they're going to do under pressure. <laughs> Bill says that Netflix could get NFL Sunday ticket to save themselves. That would be very interesting and something I would not expect. So who knows? Never say never. 
Uh, Carlos says it'll be big news whenever they confirm and it's not just one source. Yeah, completely agree. We'll keep reporting on it whenever we hear at least a reliable source saying that they think they know what's going to happen. We know that you guys like hearing updates on that and we like knowing all of that too and kind of speculating on it. So we'll keep reporting whenever we hear anything like that, but always with the caveat that nothing is set in stone until, like I said, that press release from the NFL is in my hand. Do I have any new or old streaming apps that I would like to recommend and why? I think we might actually wrap up with this question, so I would love to know if you guys have any recommendations too. Put them in the comments. But some of my favorite streaming apps right now, ooh, this is a fun one. Haven't answered this in a while. Um, I keep talking about HBO Max. I really, really like them a lot for original content. I have had some issues with the app, so I'm curious what Warner Media Discovery is going to do with that app. But as far as content goes, HBO Max has been top for me. Um, for free streaming services, I would say that the Roku channel is quickly becoming a favorite. They're just adding so much content and they have to, I know we're going to laugh about this, but, um, they've taken all of those Quibi shows and turned them into Roku originals. And I'm really kind of enjoying watching some of those. You guys have recommended a couple to me and it's been fun. Um, so Roku channel for sure. And Pluto is always a favorite. Um, any other new or old streaming services? I don't think so. I'm really just using my old standbys, but HBO Max lately has been top of my list. Um, Bill said Quest is free and friendly. Jules says Pluto TV. Yeah, Paul says Pluto TV. Yeah, Pluto TV is always top of my list. It's one of my favorite free services. Farmer says Tubi. Joe says Paramount Plus, Peacock, and Hulu. All good stuff. I've really been liking Paramount Plus and Peacock a lot lately because I love watching Premier League soccer and some of the matches are on both of those services and I think they do a great job with them. Oh, Apple TV Plus too, I think has been doing a very good job with MLB games on Friday nights. So yeah, A plus for them for quality. AJ says HBO Max is better than Netflix. We've been hearing that a lot lately. I think Netflix is really going for quantity more than anything, so just a absolute ton of shows, but I think that the quality on HBO Max is better. Uh, Paul says Peacock. Chris says Philo for live cable. My favorite free apps are Pluto, Crackle, and Tubi, all great options. Um, Netflix has great original Korean shows. Yeah, just international content in general. Netflix has a lot of good stuff. Eric says Tubi. Lots of Tubi love in here tonight. Nice. Love to see it. Uh, HBO Max, Discovery Plus, Paramount Plus are your big three, says Chris. Eric says Fubo TV. Nice. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Thanks so much for sharing all of your favorite services with me. Love it. Sometimes it's nice whenever we do this. If people are kind of new to cord cutting and haven't heard of some of these services, maybe they can find a new one. G Money says, I usually watch Pluto most nights. Bill says, Crackle. CJ says, Netflix is going through growing pains. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Netflix is kind of the adult here. <laughs> I think that they've kind of hit their limit. The growth is over. That was mean. I take it back. It could still grow. We'll see what happens next quarter. We'll talk about this again. Um, Al says Tubi, Pluto TV, and Crackle. Yeah, also antennas. I've been watching a lot of just um, primetime TV with my antenna. Frayden says Pluto TV is the best. I know there is a lot of Pluto love in this group. You guys always vote it as your most favorite free streaming service. Sydney says HBO Max and Discovery Plus. Um, let's see. Chris says Pluto, Tubi, IMDb, TV, now Freebie for free services. Frayden says Peacock is good. Yeah, lots of great options. All right, guys. I think that we are going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me again on this Wednesday night. Um, yeah, I will see you again in the next one. Bye.